Good day, traders. Hope you guys are good and welcome to this week's segment of our market breakdowns. So if you're new to this channel, please do me a favor. Kindly hit the subscribe button to join our family. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back. And I hope you guys enjoy this week's segment. Now, without wasting any time, let's get right into it. We're going to start by looking at the dollar index. And straight from the badge, you can see that this pair or this index has been respecting our analysis right so last week we were expecting a breakout from this area over here because of this congested price action over here and this congested price action has also resulted in an order block being formed now apart from the multiple candlesticks that are at the source which forms part of the red flag um if you watched my video on how to identify areas of support I mean, of supply and demand, you'll understand what I'm talking about. But anyways, if you see multiple candlesticks at the source, just know that it's a red flag, right? So apart from that, you have a break of structure, you have a consolidation away, right? You have time spent away from this area. You have a strong departure. So this is a pretty much decent level, right? So this is where we're expecting the market to react and push to the upside. Now there's a possibility that it will not hold, that it will actually break this area, right? Um, if we do get a break from this area, another area of interest will be the slow over here. If the market respects the slow, then the uptrend is still valid. But if the market violates the slow, then we should be looking for a push to the downside. But, they, but then again, these are my sentiments on the dollar index. Uh, please also, if you haven't been following this pair with me, make sure that you check out my other videos, other breakdown, breakdowns, because in those videos, I go into much detail. But anyways, let's go to other pairs. Now we're moving on to EuroCAD. Now with EuroCAD, it's very interesting. We have the market stuck between this area of supply, this area of demand over here. Now we know with currencies, the market moves from a high point to a low point, from a low to a high, right? In this instance, uh, supply is in control, right? We're also in this long-term downtrend because the market is consecutively making lower highs and lower lows. It's for that reason that we're expecting the market to continue to the downside. Why? Because according to me, this is a consolidation, not consolidation, but a correction, right? So I'm expecting the market to drop. Another thing is that look at this impulsive move to the upside. The market moved to the upside in a violent way, leaving orders that are unfilled. Now, as you can see from this other side, the market has been slowly trying to fill in the orders that are resting here. So eventually the market will create patterns that will ensure that orders are being tapped in or, or orders are being filled. The market taps into this area to fill in the orders that are left here, right? From the big institutions, from big money, right? If it does, I'm actually expecting the market to come all the way down here to test our demand area and then continue in whichever direction that it was anticipating. Now, my only problem with selling from this area and the only reason why I think this sell is a high risk, not high risk, but it's actually risky, is because if you look at the supply and demand curve, we are actually in an area of a buy territory. So that's my only red flag on the higher time frame. But other than that, I'm actually looking to sell. As you can see with this consolidation or, yeah, consolidation, we've been generating liquidity on both sides. As you know, the story with liquidity, right? So say, for example, the market goes to the upside. If it's generating liquidity, it will look to take out either side of liquidity, either the buy side liquidity or the sell stop liquidity. Go into an area where there's unfilled orders from institutions and go into the opposite direction. So these are the two scenarios that you might see on Eurocad. Either the market will go down because of this downtrend and what not, fill in the orders here, go into the demand area before going up, or the market will respect this quote-unquote support, go to the upside to take out this buy-stop liquidity, go into this supply area, 
go back, fill in the orders eventually, and retest this demand area. But other than that, let's wait for the market to react on this area of quote unquote support before we can take action. Right. Anyways, these are my sentiments on Euro CAD. Let's move on to the next pair. The next pair that we're going to look at is GBP JPY. And as you can see with GBP JPY, demand is in control, the market is breaking structure, and we are going to make our way to the upside to fetch the orders that are resting here. Right. So our bias on this pair has already been confirmed. My only problem or the only thing that I think you should take notice of is this gap over here with orders that haven't been filled. So for that reason, there's a possibility that the market will go into this area, tap orders before going to the upside. Or the market will go to the upside without actually filling any orders, right? So the second scenario is a breakout of this uh, previous high, a retest to an order block and a continuation to the upside. But either way, we're expecting long-term bullish momentum on this pair. Let's go to a lower time frame to see what's happening right here. So this right here, remember, resembles our gap over here. Also, we have this equal lows over here. In or the way I think of it, I think the market's generating liquidity over here. With multiple retests, you have a lot of liquidity on this area. And what do we know about liquidity? Is that the market has incentive, or market makers have incentive to take out the orders that are resting on that area of liquidity, right? To fill in their orders and get the market moving. So because they are or there's a possibility that there could be a lot of bias from the multiple touches originating from this area, right? The market might go down to take out those buys because it's liquidity for them. Also take out the sell stops that are resting below this area, right? Go into an area where they have the orders, which is a sub, which is a demand area before going up. This demand area is a high probability area because it's nested within a higher time frame gap. So this is why I'm considering it. Also, this demand area has resulted in a break of structure. Time spent away, the departure is looking good. It's actually a continuation pattern. So this is something that we should be anticipating. If we don't get a push to the downside, and if the market continues to push up, I'm expecting the market to break through the structure over here. <clears throat> Going to an order block in a lower time frame. And this is the second scenario that I see on GBP JPY. Either way, we're bullish on this pair. Let's move on to another pair. Now we are on GBP CHF. Before I continue, just want to highlight this area over here of liquidity, markets taking liquidity, and now it's here. Now we're on an area of supply which has been tested twice the only problem with this area of supply is this price action over here so normally with strong or with generally speaking with supply and demand areas we expect the market to move fast away from that area that's one of the ways that you can confirm that it's a valid area of supply and demand because the assumption on those areas is that large institutions have majority of their orders on those areas. So as soon as you see that the market is stuck on that area or prices being compressed on that area, just know that it will eventually break that area. So that's why in the long run, I'm expecting the market to break through this area, right? Break through it maybe coming to this area. And if it, come in, if it comes into the second area of supply, we'll see how it behaves. But then because of the break of structure, yeah, we might get a consolidation, whatever. Or oh, correction, correction, right? This is what we can see in the long run, but only because price has been stuck on this area of supply. Now let's go to a lower time frames to see what's happening, to get a clearer perspective. Now you get this push to the upside, you get this 
correction over here, you get another push to the upside and you have this consolidation over here. The market has been stuck on this area for a very really long time. And we see that there's a gap over here. So the orders that have to be filled on this area. And we also have an order block here. So what I'm expecting is the market to tap into this order block before continuing the upside, actually taking profit at this opposing supply area over here. Now let's look at the supply area. What makes it valid? Number one, it has resulted in a break of structure because it's a broken and opposing supply area. It's an area of demand, broken an area of opposing supply. Look at the time spent away. Look at the departure. Look at the price action on that area. Price hasn't spent much time on that area, right? So these are the factors that I'm considering why it should be a good area to buy from, right? We can also say that the market it's going to be generating liquidity on this area over here on this um, swing low, right? And if and if it doesn't, guys, uh, the market can still go up, take out liquidity, come back for an order block, and then, yeah. But then long run, this is what I'm expecting. My only problem is with this pair, price has been stuck here for months now because we're actually on the weekly chart. So... Will I see anything on the daily chart? Let me see. Nothing. Um, we actually see that there's a supply area over here that's been tested twice. It's not nested within a higher time frame area. We also see that there's unfilled orders from this drop over here. So eventually, eventually, guys, the market will go back to filling the orders that are here, right? We also see that the area that we were looking at has a nested um, demand area on a lower time frame. There's a nested demand area over here. So if the market does go back or if the market does drop to test the areas or the orders, if the market, okay, if the market does drop to fill in the orders that are resting here, this is where I'm gonna be placing my buy limit, right? But like I said, it might take time for the market to actually come into this area because of the amount of time that it was spending on this, right? But anyways, this is what I see on GBP CHF. Now let's move on to our final pair. This is actually an update on AUD CHF. Now we've been looking at this pair and it's behaving according to how we anticipated it. Now we've seen that the market's forming what I can say is an inverted head and shoulder. It's not perfect, but we'll work with it. Um, so I'm buying this pair. Now, if you're expecting to buy, you can either buy now, or if you're a more conservative trader, wait for a breakout from this area, wait for the market to test an order block before going up to the upside. Right. Now, if you want to learn how to identify areas of supply and demand, don't worry, because there are two videos that I prepared on identifying supply and demand areas specifically. So do make sure that you check them out if you're not familiar with them. But anyways, guys, this is all I have for you guys. Obviously, other pairs, I'll be sharing them on Telegram. So if you still haven't subscribed to my Telegram channel, the link to it will be in the description box below. Uh, other than that, guys, it's been nice. Uh, looking at the market with you guys see you again guys soon and for now peace